So, you're probably watching this right now and thinking, <clears throat> why are you not at Spain? Well, simple answer to that really. The Spain footage along with the Monaco race corrupted. Unfortunately, I didn't say this uh, enough, like quick enough to actually do it because I did Spain, Monaco and Turkey all in the same go. Um, yeah, there's no footage for either race. Now, what I'm going to try and do in this very short R&D session, also this is the only footage I managed to salvage from this. Uh, I did manage to salvage the Turkey, by the way, it's just Spain and the Monaco race that are gone. But in this little segment here, I'm going to try and explain what exactly happened uh, in the races. Now, Spain itself, not a strong track for me. Not one bit. Same with this track, to be honest, Monaco, not not strong. Um, now, with Spain itself, it was pouring a rain. First time I'd ever driven in the wet on this game. And I tried my best, but I just kept spinning off. Every five minutes, I was constantly losing the rear end. And... What I didn't see, and it wouldn't have even mattered if I did provide the footage, was somewhere in the lap, the AI went completely side by side and hit each other. This, in turn, I think it was it was in the last corner before the pit straight, uh, it caused a huge pileup. Now I was already at this stage about a lap behind, so it, you know. I didn't exactly see it either way. Um, but yeah, it promoted me from 23rd, because I think someone else was behind me who'd had just as bad a race. And uh, I ended up finishing, well, I ended up climbing a lot of positions. Now, I know what you're expecting us to say here. Oh, no, you, you somehow finished in the points. Due to the fact that everybody else crashed out. Well, I didn't. I didn't at all. I finished in 12th. Uh, my pace was so bad around Spain that I, I finished three laps down. This happened on like the 14th lap. Um, so yeah, that, that was a load of fun. Uh, but I think Senna came home in points, truly came home in fourth, which is fucking weird. And uh, Virgin scored their first points as well. Um, so yeah, it was a bit bizarre. Um... <laughs> As for the Monaco race, again, it was pretty much the same story, you know, because in league races when I've done around Monaco, I like to take it very cautiously, you know, be the snail, pull a one stop, and make positions off other people pushing too hard, and I, I did this, but nothing really happened, uh, it was me driving around 24th for the most part, and There you go. But proof breaks. But yeah, as the Monaco race, uh, I'm going to have to explain this in a different segment. Basically, uh, I crashed into the wall in turn one because I was actually hit by I think it was one of the Virgin cars. This sent us straight on turn one, and unlike F1 2013 and 2012, where it scripts what you lose, so. You can't have two punctured front tyres. In this game, you can. So, at lap one, I had two front punctures and no rear, and no front wing. Uh, but, I kept going. I'm not one to ever give up. Uh, limped to the pits, by which point I was close to being lapped within lap one, which was, you know, shocking. Uh, and at that stage, I was contemplating retiring. But I just thought, you know what, I'd rather have a finish than a DNF. Even if it is two, three laps down or whatever. Um, so, I'm coming up with the tunnel. I leave the tunnel. And... Vettel was going for a move on the outside of Weber. Now, I was well off the racing line. Well off. But, due to the fact he didn't overtake, I expected him to pull back in. He just slammed straight into the back of us. And again, another massive pileup happened. Uh, so that was really funny to watch because I was just sort of standing there going backwards, wondering what the fuck just happened. 
because uh, I wasn't looking behind. <laughs> but I just saw all these cars just up in the air. Uh, debris everywhere, wheels flying past us. Uh, and I think about... There must have been 11 finishers. And I came home in 12th again. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. But anyway, we're going to get on with now the Turkish Grand Prix. So, here we are in R&D, where I've decided to just do a bit of cockpit cam. Say if you actually used cockpit cam in 2014, you can actually see the difference. Uh, I think it's quite odd the way it looks. Uh, looks very, it looks a lot more stiff to me, I think. But uh, this is to get rich revs, I think it is. Uh, I only found this out a couple of days ago, but you can run rich revs the entire race and it doesn't hurt your fuel consumption. Uh, so, why would you change anything else, really? But either way, uh, it should be noted that this track, me and they don't really have much experience together. The only time I've ever actually driven on it was when Nebula did an R-Factor 2014 mod and Turkey was just on the calendar. Uh, and even then I didn't like it, in part because I was just really bad at the mod. Uh, this one's obviously a bit easier. A hell of a lot easier, actually. Um, but yeah, my pace, it's it's meh around here. Uh, I mean, the fact that I'm driving a cockpit cam, something that I never really do. So I usually use the uh, offset T-cam or the T-cam to drive, which I'm just so used to. Driving a cockpit cam feels very, very odd. Uh, just by the, the steering wheel is a lot more twitchy because it just doesn't feel right to me it's you know I'm sure you must know what I'm talking about I mean, each person has their own specific driving camera that I love to use but uh, yeah we've completed the already pretty fucking easily to be fair um, doing a bit of flex spin so why not so yeah we've now got the threads uh, cutting the quality now, this is my only good lap. Uh, considering I'm only getting centre at the minute. So I know that's obviously, you know, I'm probably going to be 18th if I stayed at that time. So I know I had to improve. Vettel currently 3 seconds faster. On a 127.7, we're only a 130.7, so that's proof enough. Uh, in my view at least. But yeah, I mean, this, this track, I, I did enjoy driving it, I just, I didn't feel like I had much of any consistency, which, a tracks like Canada and Monza, when I, I feel like we're very, very good consistency. Um, this was very, it wasn't too confident, okay, uh, but as I've said in my previous video in China, I seem to have a lot more consistency in the race than I did in qualifying. Because in qualifying, I can never seem to get a decent lap together. Like, I know fine well that I could easily be, I'll, I'm going to say top 8, if I got perfect lap together, but I just can never do it. Um, and obviously, I don't want to waste too many laps in qualifying, because I don't want to wear out my tyres from the race. Because, you know, I do a one-stop strategy. So... I want to be as quick as possible. Coming up to the line now, and the only man is a 130 flat. It's not perfect, but I just decided to stick with it, really. Uh, and it did, in the end, get us 12th. The footage there doesn't really show it, but I did get 12th, I promise. Uh, so cutting to the race. That's good. Uh, I think our teammates all the way down, like, 22nd. 22nd or 21st but as per usual we're probably going to get a terrible start and we do as usual cars going left and up as well but as we're seeing in China the AI is so bad on lap 1 that I can usually make up a fair bit of positions with no problems uh, this, this corner as well I've really seemed to struggle with that just in terms of where to break because uh, a few people have been saying like oh do you practice for this and I really don't not not really like I mean I barely play F1 2014 but I still practice more for the league races on that than I do in this 
and on the F1 2014 league races I barely practice uh, not not very much at all uh, even though I do enjoy this game a hell of a lot more than 2014 so I think I will start practicing just to get a bit more consistent as we take it up both of the Renaults but Kubitz is coming back up we're, we're, giving, we're leaving the space we're also going to try and force him out wide but look at this it's the exact same replication as Canada China, sorry. Well, um, there we are on lap one in the points already. And even though we didn't have a bit more help this time because we started in P12, because we had a better qualifying. Um, Sotil just runs himself out wide. I did not touch him there at all. And he goes off track to give me space. Which, you know, I'm not going to do if he did the same thing to me. But we're just easy to take around his outside. No problems there at all. So now Alonso is fighting with Shumi. And I'm thinking to myself, if these guys keep battling, I'm just going to romp around both of them. And do what I did to Kubica and Petrov just before. Go around the outside and take the pair of them. Because uh, obviously fighting is a lot slower than when you're in clean air. So just where I am now. You know, it's... It's looking dodgy because through this corner as well, the AI seem to have a lot, a lot better pace and a lot better traction. They could easily, they could take it like I couldn't. Uh, so just instantly on the outside of Shumi there. Alonso didn't. I think Shumi actually went a little bit wide. Alonso pushed him wide actually. Uh, it's been about a week since I've recorded this, so I am a bit. I apologise if I uh, sometimes lose where I am. But as you can see by the front right. Uh, it should be noted that that tyre just completely locked. Uh, I've never... If I went another lap there, that would have actually punctured the tyre. Uh, nothing else happened, by the way, in those laps. Absolutely nothing. So, just coming in for a new set of boots. But the thing is, the hope was, is that I'll have fresher tyres at the end of the race. And Senna's behind us. I only just noticed that right there and then. Senna got held. Whoops! But not my problem because he shouldn't have came into pit. Uh, but yeah, 21st place now because of that. We got hold, held in the pit stop again. Again. As if it doesn't happen enough. Like Overtaking a few cars in the pits. And someone actually just came out ahead. As we instantly just make a position up. And Kubica does not have the best of races, it has to be said. Again, leaving him in the room. Giving, I'm leaving the door open for him. But he doesn't decide to take it. And only holding on to a pitiful P19 right now. Which, not going to lie, at the time I was pretty pissed off. Because uh, I felt, at that stage of the race where I was running an 8th, I, I felt I actually had the chance to come home with some good points. Because uh, I knew that a couple of the guys at the front of the field were prime runners, so... I could have had a really good chance. Uh, so obviously some of them might run a two-stop strategy as well. For some bizarre reason, they run a two-stop strategy. It, it's never faster. As we dive up the inside of the Uzi, And here's a little... Oh, didn't cut with that. Ah oh, well, it's corrupted. Never mind. <laughs> P17 now due to someone else is in the pits. This is where all the prime runners will really start to come in now. But now I'm trying to look at Kobayashi, who not the most powerful team to be frank. I, for some reason, we've been very, very low down the order and usually fighting with my teammate. So. It's been a bit of a troubled season for BMW Sauber. But I don't really care about that in terms of threat respect because I just want to overtake him. I want to get higher up the field. And cutting just at the start of lap 14. And there's someone else in the pits. Boemi. As I set a new personal best as well on the primes. And another personal best the next lap. And someone's actually on the minimap spun and yeah uh, 
Now it should be noted that I kind of expected him since being hit by Kobe as he sort of bounced out the way, which he did start doing. But I was already going far too quick in. I didn't decide to pit, I just thought it would be much better if I just stayed out. It didn't work. And we come home in a horrific 22nd. Fuck off. What a prick. So yeah, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Um, I tried. It, it's not so much that I didn't try to avoid it. It's just I expected it to sort of move out the way, which if you watch it, you will sort of see it moving to the left. Like the grassy's car. By the way, that's racing. I'll see you guys next time.